Hello, and welcome to the 6-5 Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners and a principal analyst here at Futurum Research. And on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, More Insights, Will Townsend sits down with Charles Furlan, the VP and GM Edge Computing and Communication Service Providers for Lenovo, and David Will, the head of innovation for Island Conservation. Their conversation today is centered on how Lenovo is providing island conservation with edge computing technologies to aid in their efforts in reducing species extinction. Talk about a noble cause. While these things might not seem like they go together, this is a compelling look into a pretty cool use case for edge computing and one I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy. Let's go have a listen. I want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in to this Lenovo section of the 6.5 Summit. We have both Lenovo and one of its customers, Island Conservation. Welcome, gentlemen. Great to be here. Thanks. Hey, David, let's start with Island Conservation. Could you provide an overview of um, your mission and some of the challenges that you're facing with respect to your research efforts? Sure, thanks, Will. Island conservation prevents extinctions by removing invasive species from islands. We work on islands because there's the, that's where there's the biggest concentration of threatened species and biodiversity is the greatest. And islands represent 5% of the world's landmass, but host 20% of the world's biodiversity. The islands are extinction epicenters. 75% um, of reptiles, birds, amphibians, and mammal extinctions occur on islands. And if we look at the problem of those extinctions, invasive species are the leading cause. So introduced uh, animals, rats, cats, goats, and pigs have been introduced uh, onto islands and are implicated in up to 86% of all recorded extinctions on islands. So if we want to have a really big impact to preventing biodiversity loss, working on islands and working on the problem of invasive species is one of the most impactful ways that we can do that. Um, and we know that removing invasive species is a, is a proven conservation tool. Um, it's occurred on more than 1,200 islands worldwide. Uh, with a, a, a remarkable results. Um, we've seen species that were previously only um, uh, alive uh, because of captive rearing, um, considered extinct in the wild, that have returned following the removal, removal of invasive species, and species that were only known um, to be recorded in fossil or known to science being discovered after removing invasive species. We're seeing these remarkable, remarkable conservation gains. We also see ecosystems flourish with forests recover, um, and we're seeing nutrient uh, cycles from for seabirds to coral reefs um, being restored as well, leading to you know increased fish biomass. So there's this really remarkable thing that can happen when you restore and rewild these islands by removing invasive species. Um, but there's challenges to that. And island conservation has a proud history of looking innovatively to figure out how can we increase the scale, scope, and pace of this proven conservation tool? And how can we do that uh, faster, cheaper, and safer? And my role as head of innovation is really focused in on that. And so one of the key problems that we face is um, detecting if the problem of invasive species is gone. So it's not, is there a needle in the haystack, but is there no needle in the haystack? And how do you be confident that you've, your proven conservation action has actually been successful? And we spend about 30% of our project activity is spent looking for um, proving that the project has been successful. And so that looks like thousands of kilometers of hiking around an island, hundreds of thousands of photos collected, and conventional best practices spending two years wandering around an island trying to figure out if you've actually solved the problem. We know that that can be done faster with modeling, but you need data in a timely fashion to be able to do that. Um, and we know that in a continental system, you know, a lot of what's being talked about here with uh, artificial intelligence, IoT, those kinds of tools exist, but on islands, um, there's they're remote, there's no internet. So we're, everything is done manually. And so a lot of what we need to do is overcome those kind of those kinds of challenges. Um, and one of the projects specifically that we're working on is in Robinson Crusoe in Chile. Um, it's a couple of thousand kilometers off of the, the coastline of Chile, and it has its home to the pink-footed shearwater, which lives on only five islands in the world. And it's impacted by, again, um, some damaging invasive, invasive species. And our team out on the island has cameras, uh, trail cameras that collect photos when things walk by. There's 70 of them scattered across the island. And um, one of the biggest challenges we have is going out and collecting those manually. So it takes you know, 13 or 14 hours to get to some of these sites to collect them, bring them back into the town area. And then because there's no internet infrastructure or computing infrastructure on the island, 
All of those have to be put onto a hard drive, shipped off on the plane every two weeks out to mainland um, Santiago, and then there for processing. So when we're looking at the time between a detection event um, on a camera and actually being able to do something about it, we're talking in months, um, which is a huge delay. And so, you know, trying to figure out how can we be more efficient with our conservation dollars? How can we save species? We need real-time information. And that looks like solving the data delivery problem, the data processing problem, and the data management problem. Now, Charles, this represents the most extreme edge, you know, computing scenario. Um, power challenges. I believe there's only satellite connectivity to the island, right? And so what island conservation is working with are these large amounts of data. So this really presented Lenovo with a huge challenge. So I'd love it if you would spend some time and sort of talk about how you sort of broke this apart, help them become more efficient, and then talk a little bit more broadly about your edge portfolio capabilities. Okay, well, thank you, Will. And indeed, it is a, a very interesting use case. And we're very excited to be partnering with the island conservation here to work on a very concrete cases. Uh, as you can imagine, network connectivity is very rare or at a premium in those locations. So taking using networking to take the, uh, the amount of data created at the edge by these 70 cameras, it's too expensive or actually it's impossible, right? So, so the idea here is that there's a huge amount of data being created at the edge at, on this island, but we don't have the network, the network capability to bring it off and compute it in real time. So we brought the, that's a definition of edge computing. In reality, is to take the compute capability of the data center and bring it closer to where the data is created directly on the Robinson Crusoe Island and off the coast of Chile. So in that context, we took a Think Edge SE 450, which is one of the highest performance edge server for AI and brought it directly onto the island. So the data is still connected and, and processed on the island on one of these servers on the Think Edge SE 450. So that we went from weeks or months to get insight to how many animals are crossing this path or non-animal crossing this path as, Will, as, as David mentioned to getting the ability to process several hundred thousands image every hour or every in a few hours on the island itself. So we can get the results the same day. And that is very important. And that's a challenge that we wanted to address in introducing the compute, the edge computing capability directly on the island. Now you can imagine there's no data center, right? So there's no, a normal data center environment server would not necessarily behave well because there's a lot of humidity in the air, there's salt, from the ocean, there's a lot of dust and uh, heat and temperature differences and all that. So we needed to have a more ruggedized edge server to being able to process uh, the data and still work in a more ruggedized environment or more harsh environment. Um, we also look at a remote connectivity for that server. So while the people are working on the island, they don't necessarily have IT technician on the island to manage the server. So having remote access to the server using the Novo administration tool allows a technician anywhere in the world to take access to the server and troubleshoot or fix any of the issues that might happen on the island without having to send a technician on site. So, so these are some of the challenges that we addressed with our edge computing, and these are this is a great use cases that that result gives very concrete and very appealing results. So, Charles, has you have you and the team learned anything from this experience that you're able to take to maybe more traditional customers that are um, trying to manage mech infrastructure? Well, power is a premium and we knew this at the edge, but in this context, it's even more so, right? So uh, having power efficient systems is very important. And that is one of the key learning that was validated throughout this exercises. Uh, even the next step is how do we introduce edge computing even closer to where the cameras are located and process the information at that point. But then it becomes a challenge say, well, the, the closer you have your compute capability, then you more power you need. And if this, this is in the middle of a forest, you, you don't necessarily have access to power very easily, right? So that's one of the thing. But overall, in general, what this represents is we see more and more use cases that requires edge computing because of the networking capability being a premium or a limitation or in some other cases, because they need to have a faster time to insight. For example, in worker safety use cases in factories or in, in some of the farming environment, 
Uh, you cannot bring the network capability. You cannot have a full data center environment. And therefore, having ruggedized edge servers operating directly at the edge really help them solve the process, the massive amount of data, and get the insight and take an action like the island conservation organization is doing right now. Hey, David, I'm curious. Um, have you learned anything from this experience partnering with Lenovo? I mean, are, are there are there any opportunities to sort of expand what you're doing around your mission? Yeah, no, we, we've certainly learned a lot. You know, I think one of the things, Island Conservation is a global organization, but we're relatively small and we're always partnering with local communities and, and the places that we work. So a, a big portion of this was not just bringing the, the infrastructure and edge computing to the island, but also making sure that the island itself, the community could benefit from that. And so how can that community, which now has internet access for the first time in a reliable way, how can that be managed and used to advance their own sustainable vision, you know, sustainable development vision beyond just the conservation applications. Um, and so I think that's a, you know, a really big thing for us to take is how can the problems that we're trying to solve from conservation, how can those also benefit all the communities? Because all of those things are always kind of in sync as to the only way to get these projects done is to be working hand in hand with the communities that we're working with. Um, and we, uh, Island Conservation and our partners at the um, Our Oceans Conference in Palau last month launched the Island Ocean Connection Challenge um, to restore 40 you know, globally important marine island ecosystems by 2030. Um, and there's a, a big number of backers of Rewild and, and uh, scripts and a couple of the government of Panama and Palau and a number of other partners that are getting behind this. Um, but it, it really shows the potential for these kinds of solutions and the scalability behind it. And that it's not just Robinson Crusoe Island. There's a whole number of islands around the world that need these sorts of um, edge computing cases. And the, you know, this kind of partnership that we've that we've launched um, with Lenovo of how can that scale to really address the problems of biodiversity, climate change, um, and and sustainable development in all these really important places. It's really a beautiful use case. It's near and dear to my heart. My second home is in the Florida Keys and we're, we're dealing with uh, invasive lionfish and even iguanas, if you can believe it, they're, they're not native to the area, but this is such a, a fantastic use case. And, you know, David, uh, Charles, it's been a great conversation. Charles, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Thank you very much. Well, no, it's been a pleasure to collaborate in its, uh, with the island conservation and to work with the Robinson Crusoe Island community to build a technology hub. Lenovo provided a lot of equipment and to, for, for the local population to have access. Uh, we upgraded the uh, internet connectivity to, uh, to have more bandwidth, but also uh, continuing to work with the island conservation to not only process the data, but we have some of our data scientists now working with, the, with them to try to identify a lot more precision, the species and the animals that are being captured on the, on the camera. So this is an ongoing journey and we're excited to be part of that uh, venture. Thank you. Excellent. Well, it's been a great conversation, gentlemen. Charles, David, thank you very much. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in today. Thank you.